Hello, welcome back everybody. We have a brand new editorial video where today I'm going to be going through the Oscar 2023 nominations and giving you guys my picks for who I think should win, who I would personally love to see win, and of course just as a reminder I will also be doing a top 10 most worst snubs this year list coming out on Friday. The Oscars are coming up, so we have quite a few little different contents coming up for that. And if you love talking movies, this is certainly the channel for you. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, comment down below. And without further ado, let's dive into this whole entire editorial. And starting out this, we're going to share my screen and we have best sound. And the nominations for this were All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of the Water, The Batman, Elvis, and Top Gun Maverick. Now easily here, all of these had incredible sound. When you go down to the sound design in each and every one of these movies, they were absolutely incredible. There was no doubt about it. On a personal level, I would probably go with the Batman or Avatar, but on what I think will win, it will most likely be Top Gun Maverick. The reason that I say that is because Top Gun Maverick, when you think about sound and you think about what you got in the theater, that is the movie that truly just empowered you with every layer of that film and you know all quiet on the western front i would definitely not count out on this but for me when i'm looking at all these it's top gun maverick for me that leads us into the next thing best original score we had all quiet on the western front babylon the banshees of inishirin everything everywhere all at once and the fablemans now this one hands down goes to Babylon. I think Babylon is the best score that we've gotten in like the last six years. I am obsessed with this score. I am completely intertwined with this score. And I truly think that this is the score that many different people are missing out on when we talk about this. So I highly, highly think Babylon should win this. I also think it will win this. Now, if we're going on the other category of what will win this, if it's not that, it'll probably end up being the Fablemans. I think that's more of the Dark Horse. Not even the Dark Horse. I think that's honestly more of the front runner. But for me, I think Babylon deserves it all. And I'm going to pick Babylon as my winner. So we have Best Makeup and Hairstyling. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, and The Whale. This one's a little bit tough. I think it's really much between All Quiet on the Western Front and Elvis for itself, specifically because of a lot of the Oscar love that both of those films are truly getting and the transformations that they were able to do when it came down to, of course, a lot of the war themes in All Quiet, as well as, of course, Elvis himself. But I would not count out The Whale, because if you've seen The Whale, what they were able to do with Brendan Fraser in there is absolutely stunning. The Batman and Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, also kind of had that same thing, of course, with the Penguin in there, and then Wakanda Forever with all the, um, like, Namor and all the, I can't remember the exact names that they're called, what their, what their um, culture is. I think it's the Makayans or something of that nature. Maybe, I think I'm actually getting Avatar mixed up in that, but... This one I really do think comes down to All Quiet and Elvis. Um, and this comes from someone who really isn't like categorizing every little thing. Of course, like the night of the Oscars, I'll probably start doing that a little bit more, a little bit more research. I want to give more of just my general thoughts without having to not cheat, but study. And that's where we come up to best live action short. Now this one, I haven't seen or really heard from any of these. So I'm just going to say the red suitcase. We'll go with that. Best costume design, we have Babylon, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Now, I think a dark horse in here should be stated as Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris because it did get the nomination, but I don't really think that even has a chance. I really do think it comes down to Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and probably Elvis. Now, I'm going to go with Everything Everywhere All at Once winning this one because it even got the nomination that when they were reading the nominations this was one of the ones that i was like i don't think they're gonna respect what they were going for and they did and the amount of costumes specifically that stephanie shu gets to like wear in there was spectacular i i loved what they were able to do in there so i'm gonna go everything everywhere all once but i think the dark horse here would probably end up being black panther wakanda forever specifically because ruth carter is one in the past for black panther and i think the costume design in this film alone was elevated even above the rest so next up we have best animated short film this one's the boy the mole the fox and the horse the fine the flying sailor Ice Merchants, My Year of Dicks, and An Ostrich Told Me the World is Fake, and I think I believe it. I definitely need to watch at least a couple of these, but I'm going to go with The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse. I think this is actually, like, from what I remember, I think it's already won a couple of awards, so we're going to go with that one. 
best animated feature film. Del Toro's Pinocchio, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, and Turning Red. Now, this is a very great lineup. I think we had a great year for animated film last year. I personally would have switched The Sea Beast out and put Lightyear there. Uh, I think I'm a huge fan of Toy Story, obviously, as you can see right there and kind of behind me. But I think Lightyear was actually pretty great. But if I were to go off of these choices, I think the clear winner will probably end up being Del Toro's Pinocchio. I think no doubt about it, that is going to be the movie that wins. It's won all the precursors. It's Del Toro. It's him making an animated film. It seems pretty obvious. I would not count out Puss in Boots The Last Wish, though. It seems like this is kind of a Spider-Verse year for that film. Not as highly acclaimed as Spider-Verse, but where Spider-Verse kind of came out of nowhere at the very last second made good box office money had great fans critics and audience and a lot of people went and saw it and i think that's the one thing to keep in mind is that puss in boots could come in as that dark horse and win this um i wish marcel the shell would win this i think he that movie was so freaking adorable but um i think there might be some like is this really animation is it not it is i mean if you watch the behind the scenes stuff it, it's actually quite fascinating what they were able to do there but I think it's between Del Toro's Pinocchio and Puss in Boots' The Last Wish. So if I were to pick one, I personally would have picked Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Uh, that was my favorite animated film of the year. But honestly, the more I think about Puss in Boots, I really love that movie. So take that as what you will. Best visual effects. All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of the Water, The Batman, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, and Top Gun Maverick. It's Avatar here. It's my pick, and it's also probably going to be the Academy's pick. Avatar The Way of the Water had incredible visual effects that blended visual, like, CGI characters with live action, and it still just stuns me that this entire thing is fake. So you'll never, con you'll never ever convince me that James Cameron did not go to another planet to film this. I'll, t I'll tell you that right now. So up next, we have Best Production Design. All Quiet on the Western Front. Avatar The Way of the Water. Babylon, Elvis, and the Fablemans. The production design for all of these was quite incredible. But that's why, on a personal pick, I would have picked Babylon for this. Specifically because of that whole scene where they are filming everything in the desert. That was like one of the most extravagant scenes I've seen. Just the production design alone in that scene is probably was the reason they got the nomination. But I think this one is going to go to Elvis. Elvis are at least all quiet on the Western Front. Elvis had some really incredible set decorations and the way that they were able to actually create and bring a lot of the stages to life and a lot of Elvis's life together. I thought Elvis was made in a very extravagant way that only Boz Lerman could really direct it and helm it. But the production design in that film is quite stunning and at times even feels like a play. And I loved what Boz Lerman and of course everyone who was involved with that was able to do. So I'm going to go Elvis with that. What's all quiet on the Western Front Paul but coming in second place or up next. Oh, up next, we got Best Original Song. We got Applause from Tell It Like a Woman. I have no idea what that is. Hold My Hand from Top Gun Maverick, Lady Gaga. Lift Me Up, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Rihanna. Not To Not To from RRR. And This Is Life from Everything Everywhere All at Once. So I don't think Everywhere, Everywhere All at Once gets it. I don't think Tell It Like a Woman gets it. I'm honestly like between the middle three that I just mentioned, Top Gun, Black Panther, and RRR. Part of me thinks Black Panther has the chance to win this. And I'm still, I think I'm going to go with my gut and say, I think hold my hold or lift me up is going to win. And the reason I'm saying lift me up is going to win one. She just performed at the, the Super Bowl, So there's a lot of eyes on that. She didn't play it there, but that's kind of like, that's one of those things. Second, the song was very much for Chadwick Boseman. A lot of people like honoring him as a person, as a hero, as everything of that nature. And specifically what Wakanda Forever was all about. So I could see it easily winning there. The only other thing is, is Hold My Hand's a really good song. And I know Top Gun was like the big freaking movie last year. Like it was the big movie last year, no doubt about it. And that's kind of like the reason I'm probably being stupid on not picking this. Um, but the other thing is like Not To Not To is RRR's only single thing. And for anyone who went to like any of the awards screenings for this, the amount of people that got up and started dancing during this sequence maybe it was kind of the reason that I got put in there and maybe that's kind of the memory that they have. So I'm going to go not to not to a second place and hold my hand in the third. I could change this the day of, but as of right now, that's what I'm feeling. Next, we have best international feature film, All Quiet on the Western Front, Argentina, 1985, Close, EO, and The Quiet Girl. This is easily going to All Quiet on the Western Front. It's literally been nominated for every other thing, so I'm not 
even going to pick a second front runner or anything of that nature because that movie's winning. Next up, we have Best Film Editing, The Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Tar, and Top Gun Maverick. I'm going to give this to Everything Everywhere All at Once, specifically on a personal level and as well as just what they were able to accomplish. The way that they were able to edit and splice between each and every one of the things never make it mixed up. That movie is made in the editing room. I know also in the script, but very much in the editing room that film was created. The other second place I would probably give this to is Top Gun Maverick, specifically because of how much footage they actually had to go through. And I think if you were to do a Dark Horse, I would probably say the Dark Horse is Elvis here because Boz Lerman is just a freak when it comes down to editing and how he edits. But I think some people might think that film's a little bit overly edited. We're going to go ahead and just pretty much say, yeah, it's probably going to be going to everything, everywhere all at once with Top Gun Maverick coming in second place or vice versa. Up next, we have the documentary short film, The Elephant Whisperer, Haul Out, How Do You Measure a Year, The Martha Mitchell Effect, and Stranger at the Gate. This one, I have no idea. I'm going to say The Elephant Whisperer. Let's move on. Best Documentary Feature Film, All That Breeze, All the Beauty and Bloodshed, Fire of Love, A House Made of Splinters, and Na Navalny? I'm going to go with Fire of Love because that's the only one I've also only heard about. Up next, Best Cinematography. This one shocks me that a, a lot of films were not in this, but we have All Quiet on the Western Front, Bardo False Chronicles of Handful of Truths, Elvis, Empire of Light, and Tar. Now, this is going to be tough because... I have not seen Bardo, uh, I'll be honest, but I have seen the rest of these movies. Empire of Light is stunning and did give one of the best cinematographies, but a lot of that is because it's Roger Deakins, but I don't think it's some of his best work, and I wouldn't even say it was, it was one of my favorite works of this year. All Quiet on the West Front did have some incredible cinematography. Elvis did as well, and Tar. With this one, I'm actually going to give it to All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, that film, when I think of cinematography and I think of the elements, that film out of the three that I'm really thinking about was the most beautiful film of the year. Um, out of the, at least those five. So we'll go from there. Best Original Screenplay. The Banshees of Inishirin. Everything Everywhere All at Once. The Fablemans. Tar and Triangle of Sadness. Now, I have not seen Triangle of Sadness of watching this video. I just didn't think it was really going to be elevated to that standard. I am planning on watching it before the Oscars. I have it like queued up right now. So we're going to be watching that. But the best original screenplay, I really do think, again, this comes down to Banshees of Inisherin or Everything Everywhere All at Once. I'm going to go right now and say that Martin McDowell make, wins this for Banshees of Inisherin. I say that because I don't think he's going to win Best Director nor Best Picture. I would personally go with Everything Everywhere All at Once out of all of five of these. I think that was the best script, but let's say Banshees of Inisherin is probably going to be the winner of this. Everything Everywhere will probably be the, the second coming upper. And then the Dark Horse? Don't count out Tar. There's a lot of people who love Tar. Tar got a lot more nominations than I expected. What's up? Best Adapted Screenplay. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery, Living, Top Gun Maverick, and Women Talking. I'm going to tell you right now, I think Top Gun Maverick's actually taking this one home. I know that's kind of shocking to say. I know that's kind of weird to say. Um, but there's something about that movie that's just screaming that it could come in for a lot of these wins that it did get nominated for. And I think Top Gun Maverick could come in and win that screenplay. The fact that it even got nominated is, again, one of those conversations to be had. On a personal level, I would probably nominate Women Talking or Glass Onion. Like Those would be the picks that I would have chose for what should have won. Um, but I do think if you're asking for a second place, I think Women Talking and then Glass Onion, um, with maybe All Quiet in there. I don't see Living, but I, I could be wrong on that. Again, that's another movie I have actually not seen. Up next, we have Best Supporting Actress, Angela Bassett, Hong Chow, Carrie Condon, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Stephanie Hsu. This is going to Angela Bassett. Do I think she gives the best performance in this category? No, it's not my personal favorite. But I do think Angela Bassett absolutely finally deserves an Oscar. She is an absolutely tremendous actress. And Wakanda Forever is one of the best performances in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. She left it all on the table. And again, I would give it to Angela Bassett for that matter. So Angela Bassett's going to win this. I think second place is honestly Carrie Condon from The Banshees of Inisherin. But my personal pick would be Stephanie Hsu for this, or even Hong Chao, because I loved both their performances. I thought they were incredible. Up next, we have Best Supporting Actor, Brendan Gleeson, Brian Tyree Henry, Judd Hirsch, Barry Keoghan, and Ki Ha Kwan. Now, this is easily going to Ki Ha Kwan. Uh, he absolutely deserves this. This is my also my favorite performance of the five. I think this is such an incredible performance. It's one that I think 
doesn't really like scream Oscars, but when you do go back and revisit the film, when you get away from all the action, all the emotional points, that's the, my, one of my favorite moments is when he tells Michelle Yao, I would have loved to have just done taxes and laundry with you in another life. And it, it's like weirdly one of the most emotional and dramatic things that I've heard last year during the Oscars or during anything. So I think he's winning this. It, it's his up and coming list. I really, my second pick, I guess, or my, like if I had to pick another personal pick with Barry, Barry Keoghan, um, I, but I do think it, it'd probably go Kiha Kwan, Brendan Gleeson, Barry Keoghan, and Brian Tyree Henry, or maybe Judd Hirsch, but Brian Tyree Henry was also really incredible in the causeway, so I was really happy to see him even get nominated for that. We lead into Best Lead Actress. Kate Blanchett, Ana de Armas, Andrea Riseborough, Michelle Williams, and Michelle Yao. My personal pick is Michelle Yao. I think she gave the best performance of last year. Well, that was at least nominated. But Kate Blanchett's winning this. She's won every damn precursor. I, I would be shocked at this point if she didn't. She's not my personal pick. I thought she was really good in the movie, but I would rather see like Michelle Yao win this year. Um, but as a dark horse, I do want to say Andrea Riseborough. I, do, I will say that. The fact that she even got the nomination makes me think that she's a dark horse in this. Which leads me into Best Lead Actor, where at one point in time, I thought this was a three-way tie, but we have Austin Butler, Colin Farrell, Brendan Fraser. That's the three-way tie right there at one point in time. And then Paul Mescal and Bill Knight. So I don't, I, think, I don't think Bill or Paul are winning. I think, again, I haven't seen Living, so I can't really talk about that, but I have seen After Sun, and I think Paul Mescal was absolutely incredible in that movie. Um, he's, one of the, he's the best part about that film. But damn, it's the top three, man. It's Austin, Colin, and Brendan. My heart says it's going... Not even my heart. My heart says in my favorite performance this year was Brendan Fraser. That I, I think he should win. But I think Austin's going to win it. I think Austin's going to get this thing. And Austin's taking it home. He just keeps winning precursors. And Colin Farrell's won a couple too. So I think he would be second place. But the fact that The Whale didn't get nominated for a lot more also makes me think that some voters might not actually watch The Whale and they're just going to go with those top two. So that's where I'm going to go. I would be great to see Brendan. He's my personal pick, but that's going to be my choice. I'm going Austin first, Colin second, Brendan Fraser third. Up next, best director, Martin McDowell, D The Daniels, Steven Spielberg. Todd Field and Ruben Oslin. Now I'm shocked Ruben even got nominated. Again, I haven't seen Triangle of Sadness. It's just Triangle of Sadness did not get nominated for a lot. Um, but best director for here, I think it is going to the Daniels. I think it's a, not a safe pick, but it's what my heart wants. And it's my personal choice as well. So I want him to win second place, Steven Spielberg, Dark Horse Martin. Um, but Steven is like second place. Like if it's not going to be the Daniels, it's going to end up being Steven Spielberg for the Fablemans which I really like the Fablemans, but I think West Side Story was better last year for looking at a directing standpoint. So the Daniels is easily my pick, which leads us into the final award, best picture. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of the Water, The Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. Best picture as of right now, I would probably give it to Everything Everywhere all at once. My personal pick would be Avatar. That was my favorite film of last year. But like, out of like the ones that could actually win, Everything Everywhere all at once is my best pick. But I think the dark horse here is Top Gun Maverick. 1,000% is going to be Top Gun Maverick. If Top Gun Maverick wins the PGA award, then... I think it has a high chance of winning the Oscar. And if you're asking for a second place, I'd probably put the Fablemans um, to be a little bit more safer. But I, I think that's where we're looking at. We're looking at everything everywhere, the Fablemans, and then the Dark Horse's Top Gun Maverick, which would be awesome if it won. I, I would not be mad if Top Gun It's going to be my picks for the Oscars. I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts on who you think will be winning and losing at the Oscars this year. Again, this is going to be on March 12th. So I will be having a reaction of all the winners. It's the same night as The Last of Us, so I don't know really how I'm going to be filming everything yet, but I will be getting at least both videos out that same night as The Last of Us review, as well as the Oscars. Make sure to look forward to that, as well as my top 10 snubs that are coming up very soon. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. So of course, until next time, stay classy.